You have got this. You have got this. You are gonna get Martin Kirby on the floor and you're gonna punch him and you're gonna punch him and you're gonna hurt him because I hate that little twerp. You are going to destroy him, wring his bloody little neck. I hate him. You love it. Uh, you Adam, love it. Adam, Adam. This is why I'm here. This is why you brought me back. That's exactly what I'm gonna do to Martin Kirby. Ruin him. Right, okay, okay. That's exactly what I'll do. Maybe go and get a bit of water. Calm down a bit. Gearing up for a rematch from Refuse to Lose as Joe Coffey has a second shot at Minoru Suzuki. The Scottish Iron Man being serenaded to the ring by the What Culture Pro Wrestling fans. It's a tradition as he enters to his... Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one ball! Introducing first, making his way to the ring, weighing at 110 kilos of rock and rolls, from Glasgow, Scotland, he is a wrestler, a mercy wrestler, the the world to him to make sure he takes advantage of his second opportunity. There's no shame in losing to a mixed martial arts legend, but there's even more and glory his in beating one. The Japanese legend, the leader of the Suzuki Gun faction, and a master not just of pro wrestling, but as you said, Jim, of mixed martial arts as well. This man makes strong men cry and weak men scream for their mommy. Minoru Suzuki, the, in the innovator, one of the inventors of modern mixed martial arts, one of the founders of pain crazy in Japan that is the death and current mixed martial arts and ultimate fighting championship craze. There he is, Suzuki. And by the way, notably absent tonight, his corner man, El Desperado. What do you try and do differently this time around? If I was Joe Coffey, knowing what I went through and refused to lose, I wouldn't have showed up tonight. But being that Joe Coffey is a the Scottish Iron Man, he's a tough son of a bitch, if I can be allowed to say that, he is going to learn what he did wrong, he's going to improve on what he did better, and he's going to attempt to take this man down. You cannot, the knowledge that Minoru Suzuki possesses, He's trained under the god of Japanese Piroresu, Paul Gotch, the legendary Wigan snake pit master, Billy Robinson. 
Japanese submission expert Yoshiaki Fujiwara. You can't have more experience or more knowledge than Suzuki. He's got to try to create an opening for himself. Suzuki is still, even though he doesn't seem like it, flesh and bone. I don't know whether Suzuki would quit, but you may be able to make him pass out from pain. Coffey has to create an opening and capitalize and do it quickly. He'll only make one mistake, will Suzuki. Coffey and Suzuki filling each other out in the early going. I mentioned a moment ago, El Desperado. If there is any asterisk on uh, that first win that Suzuki was able to score over Coffey, it's that for a period in that match, El Desperado was uh, attacking Coffey on the outside. So without that, it really is just a one-on-one -on -one contest here. If Coffey wins, uh, Coffey doesn't win tonight, there won't be any excuses. Well, I think Coffey, the one thing that he earned and refused to lose was some respect for Minoru Suzuki. And Suzuki respect, respects few men walking. You have to prove that you're tough. You have to prove that you'll endure pain and walk across hell with gasoline britches on. And that's exactly what Coffey did. And perhaps that's why Suzuki doesn't want his corner man here. He wants to play it straight tonight. He wants to beat the man one-on-one. -on -one. And look, take that into the head scissors from Suzuki. Both men back to their feet. And Joe Coffey more than holding his own in that initial exchange. Coffey, as well as his uh, recent loss to Suzuki, in general, he's been getting a little bit frustrated. He lost recently in a singles match and loaded to Big Damo as well. Coffey, obviously, an extremely talented heavyweight here in the United Kingdom. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hang on. Head to head like two bulls. The fans trying to be the, uh, the impetus. The man in Joe Coffey's corner has a chop there, and Suzuki's going to laugh at that. Suzuki. And Coffey doesn't back up either. These two exchanging chops. Look, Suzuki is laughing. I tell you, I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't be laughing if I got chopped by Joe Coffey. Well, you're not Minoru Suzuki, Dave. You're not even Cutie Suzuki. Who's that? Never mind. Before your time. Look at this exchange. Suzuki with those chops. He's backed Coffey into the ropes. He'll. Send him to the opposite side and Suzuki goes for the big boot, but Coffey ducks it and Coffey with the shoulder block takes down Suzuki. And that's one thing, Suzuki is not used to an aerial attack from a man this big and this powerful. Gut wrench, carrying Suzuki around. Side salto. Suzuki got his leg hook there as Coffey and only gets a two count. And equally, as much as Coffey has plenty to learn from their first encounter, I'm sure Suzuki has taken quite a lot away from that match to refuse to lose as well. And he's going to be even more dangerous because now in this second match, he knows Coffey. Well, that's exactly right. And Joe Coffey, the master, of course, of the discus lariat that he calls the black coffee. There's a swing, but look, Suzuki hooked him. Oh, my God. He's my God, that's not legal, but it sure is effective. Referee Steve Linsky, our senior referee here in WCPW, calling for the break and gets it. Now Suzuki grabbing the leg of Coffey and they're out here in front of us. Well, watch out, we saw this and refused to lose. Suzuki grabbed one of my bottles of my drink and whacked Coffey over the head with it. Suzuki is a dangerous man inside the ring, in the octagon, on the mat, or on the floor, or in the street for that matter. He's got, he's got Coffey by the beard there. Now continuing to... There's worse places he could grab it. <laughs> yeah, oh! I'm sure there are. Was that spit or a tooth that just flew into the crowd? Well, I hope for coffee's sake it was the former, but Suzuki is taking this up the stage here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hang on. Suzuki, is he going for one of those deadly kicks? Bam! Nailed it. Absolutely he nailed it. Just kicked a field goal. Did they do that over here? He kicked a soccer goal. A conversion, we call that in rugby. Well, he converted coffee from conscious to unconscious. And it was a quick conversion. I'll teach you rugby sometime. You'll like it. It's like American football, but we don't wear helmets and pads. Well, that sounds pleasant. And by the way, Joe Coffey, with an amateur rugby career to be proud of, but an athlete in more than one sport is Coffey. But now, as he charged back in, Suzuki instantly gaining the advantage once again. And you see Suzuki with those short boots, no socks. If he goes for an ankle or leg submission, the, the boots sometimes make it easier to get a grip. 
So Suzuki wants as short a boot as possible to make it harder for his opponent to submit him with a leg hold. Finally releasing Coffey is oh! Suzuki and another chop. Sounded like a rifle shot. Coffey once again going chop for chop for chop and Suzuki is what well, he was letting him do it. He was going to put up with that Fujiwara armbar. Can he get it? Can he lock it? If he does, this thing's over with. Coffey desperately makes the ropes necessitates a break. You saw how desperately Coffey was scrambling, just writhing in agony there. And Suzuki with absolutely no time allowing for Coffey to make a recovery with that boot to the right shoulder. Coffey with the, oh, sorry, I should say Suzuki with the, the kick to that right arm of Coffey. And he's been really focusing on that part of the body in the past few minutes. And look, Suzuki traps his man in the ropes on a regular basis. You can't win that way. It's not legal. But he can certainly do a lot of damage before the referee's five count. Suzuki obviously careful not to get disqualified, but as you say, taking full advantage of that, of that five count to inflict as much pain as possible on the Iron Man. Oh! Once again, going back to those devastating open-handed chops. Suzuki with an insane oh. smile on his face. This man just loves inflicting pain, doesn't he, Minoru Suzuki? Suzuki, brutal, cruel, has no compassion for his fellow man when he's in a fight, whether it be in a wrestling ring or a mixed martial arts match, any type of combat sports contest. He does what he has to do and he doesn't feel badly about it. Oh God, look at this! That front face off from Suzuki, cutting off the oxygen flow, the blood flow to the brain. Of coffee. And effectively, Suzuki has him in a standing guard and so Coffee turns it into a sustained vertical suplex. That was tremendous, tremendous energy, tremendous heart from Coffee to find a way out of that. I think he surprised Suzuki with that one. Coffee now has turned the tables. Suzuki in the corner, he's reeling. Oh! Here comes Coffee for a second time. Second avalanche. Coffee will go, but this time Suzuki follows him, and Coffee saw him just in time. Look at the agility of Joe Coffee, my God! A version of the best moonsault ever! The hook leg, the hook leg! Oh, it was two and three quarters from Joe Coffee. Boy, I tell you, these guys are really cooking. Joe Coffee showing amazing agility for a man of his size and strength. Could Suzuki be stunned? Coffee is picking up Suzuki, and he, he's going to try, I think and take advantage of this rare moment where Suzuki looks vulnerable. You said he will make one mistake in the match, Jim. This might be it. Suzuki now fighting back. Such a small opening for Coffee before Suzuki found his way back into the contest. Whoa! Boot to the face. Minoru Suzuki turning up the heat. Another soccer kick. Lateral press. There's a cover again, and oh my goodness. Coffee once again getting out of it but he is playing a dangerous game because once again it was just a split second away from two defeats in a row against Minoru Suzuki. Well Suzuki spending a lot of time disputing that count and that gives Joe Coffey a chance to recover. That's a, a mistake that I would not think Suzuki would make. Possibly he thinks this match is well in hand. Well when they've competed for the oh, first time this is how Suzuki won the Gotch pile driver. And Carl, Carl Gotch's specialty. He got it, it refused to lose. This time Coffee was carried, went for the black coffee, no one home. Oh! Lariat to the back of the head. A rabbit lariat. Coffee improvising when the black coffee missed. He hit him in the back of the head instead. Good and Lord! German suplex, there's the bridge. Can he get him? Coffee for the biggest no, win two, in his two, career. Two. Referee Steve Lindsay says two. It was very close, but a two count. I thought he got him. I thought he got him, but big, big call from Linsky there saying that that was only a two. There will be people debating that after this match coffee finishes. goes for the black coffee. Suzuki going for the sleeper. Coffee able to power out of that again. And coffee will go to the ropes. Suzuki following him though. Coffee went for another lariat and Suzuki with the sleeper. Coffee is fading fast. Coffee got to find a way to the ropes. Some of the greats in wrestling have used the sleeper to tremendous effect. Vern Gagne, the perennial AWA world champion, was known for it. 
Johnny Weaver, the master of the sleeper in the Carolinas. Jim, Mr. Wrestling Woods, an NCAA heavyweight champion in the United States, a master of the sleeper. But Minoru Suzuki has made it his own. He's going for the God's power driver again. He's got him up and he oh. drops him. Drops him on his head. Suzuki makes the cover. And for the second time in a row, Minoru Suzuki beats Joe Coffey with the Gotch pile driver. I tell you, Dave, here's the flat fact of the matter. Regardless of whether Joe Coffey is 0 for 2 against Minoru Suzuki or not, he is raising his profile as Coffey with every challenge to a legend, an icon like Minoru Suzuki. Every time he has a great showing against a man of this talent and this reputation, Coffey's reputation is enhanced not only here in the United Kingdom, but around the world. And what was striking here, Jim, I think, is that Coffey came a lot closer this time, I think, to defeating Suzuki. So the Iron Man is definitely learning every time he gets in there with him. Oh, definitely. That's the way you learn. As a young boy in Japan, Minoru Suzuki came up the same way. He got the crap kicked out of him on a regular oh, basis. Oh, look at that. But he learned in there. Joe Coffey has earned the respect of a mixed martial arts icon, Minoru Suzuki. It's a different story than it refused to lose. There, Coffey was an errand boy. Here, he was a warrior. Oh, Suzuki leaving the ring. Coffey is inviting him back in. And you're right, Coffey and Suzuki finally reaching a level where Suzuki was prepared to take the hand of Joe Coffey. And I promise you, he does not do that for every opponent. Well, Joe Coffey has nothing to be ashamed of and a lot to be proud of here tonight. It will come. His day will come, will Joe Coffey's day, and it will be soon. And the fans chanting his name, Dave, they recognize that already. Coffey has to make sure he doesn't get too frustrated from this defeat because he is improving, as we said, with every one of these matches as he takes on greats like Suzuki. This crowd clearly appreciating the effort from the Iron Man tonight. Look at me! Look at me! Not now! Not now! Wow.